section 5.6 are going to be factored by special products. What we're going to do first is we're just going to recall some of our other type of factoring problems that we've done in the last section, um, factoring trinomials. But the first thing we always do is check for a GCF. So in number one, none of these terms have a common factor. So then I see it's a trinomial. I'm going to try rooftop, which is what multiplies to give us a non, but add to give us our middle term, which is a six. So we're looking for factors that give us a non. 1 times 9, that's not going to give us a 6 when we add them. 3 times 3, okay, that gets us 6. So now we're ready to go to our first term, which is a 1x squared, and that's where we split it up. So I'll put it over a 1x and a 1x. Simplify if you can. The, um, 3 over 1 doesn't simplify, and then over here, 3 over 1 doesn't. So I'll write from bottoms up 1x plus 3. And then I'll also do it here, 1x plus 3. When our parentheses are exactly the same, I can rewrite it as x plus 3 squared. Okay, we move on to number 2. We check for a GCF, and there is none. So we find what multiplies to give us 25, but it's going to add to give us negative 10. Okay, so we have um, 25 times 1, that's not going to work, and then we have our 5 times 5, and then for it to give us, add to give us a negative 10, we need them to be negative 5s. And we put them over our first term, which is 1x and a 1x, nothing simplifies, so then I write bottoms up, 1x minus 5. And then right here is the same thing, x minus 5. Once again, I can rewrite this as x minus 5 squared. All right, number three, we check for GCF. There's no GCF. Nothing can come out of all three of these terms. So we're going to do our bottoms up method. What multiplies to give us 25, it's going to because that's a plus, it's going to add to give us a positive 10 this time. Okay, well that's going to be 5 and 5. And then remember the next step, after we find our factors, we always put it over this first term, which is 25, and we split up the x's. 25x and then a 25x. Now, 5 over 25, this fraction right here is going to simplify, so I must divide a 5 out of each of them. And then on this side, the same thing happens to 5 to 5 out of each of them. Bottom up, 5x plus 1. And then over here, 5x plus 1. And we can rewrite as a squared term. So we're going to get 5x plus 1 squared. All right, moving on. We look at number 4. And then we're going to check for GCF first. Um, I'm seeing an x squared in all of these. So the first thing I want to do is factor out an x squared. And that leaves me with 9y squared plus 12y plus 4. Let's double check and make sure we didn't leave anything out. Looks good. Now we're going to take our parentheses and try bottoms up. 4 times 9 is going to be 36. But add to give me uh, 12. So we're looking for what multiplies to give us 36, that's 1 times 36, that's not going to give me 12. 2 times 18, no. 3 times um, 12 is 36. 4 times 9 is 36, and then we try 6 and 6. Okay, so when we go through all our factors, we find 6 and 6, and then 
we go back to our original our first time we're going to have a non y so we're going to divide it by non y we're going to do the same thing over here and we're going to simplify these both divide by a three so i'm going to divide a three out of each of them i'm going to have a three and a two on the right side the same thing happens divide by three divide by three and we write bottoms up 3y plus 2 this one is 3y plus 2 drop your original GCF now I can rewrite this as x squared parenthesis 3y plus 2 squared Okay, this next section we're going to be talking about difference of two squares. It's one of our special products. Now, when we're talking about two squares, we're talking about perfect squares. Let me just take one second and one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is sixteen, and five squared is twenty-five. That should be plenty enough. These are called perfect squares. When we're working on factoring and if we see difference which means subtraction of a number that's a perfect square which could be this and of course it extends on even further that's just a picture of it difference of perfect squares then we can apply this formula to it so we're going to be working with that first and let me erase this okay we're going to be working with difference of perfect squares and we're going to use this formula. So first thing we want to do is just like we always do, check for a GCF. Well, there's nothing in common. It's not four more terms, so I don't group. It's not a trinomial, which is three terms, so I can't use bottoms up. So then I check to see I have this new one, difference means subtraction. And do I have perfect squares? Well, there's a square term and 100 is a perfect square because 10 times 10 is 100 so I'm gonna say yes I have difference of two squares I need to name my a your a is gonna be in this first term what is squared the y your b is gonna be um, just looking at the 100 what squared gives you 100 or sometimes you can think of it what is the square root of 100 so name your a name your b once you have your a and once you have your b, then all we do is plug it into this formula. a plus b, a minus b. So I'm going to say y plus 10, y minus 10. And that's by plugging it into this formula right here, putting my a's and b's into those positions. Most of this is recognizing which formula, formula to use. Now number six, don't be scared because it's a fraction. I'm going to name our A. Okay, first of all, there's no GCF. It's not four terms, so not grouping. Not three terms, so we're not going to use bottoms up, but it's two terms. I have a subtraction, and I have things that can be perfect squares. So I'm going to name my A. It's just simply one-fourth. And my B is going to be a Y. Okay, then I'm going to plug it in A plus B, A minus B. A plus B, A minus B, and we're done, okay? And number seven, we're going to factor out a GCF, which is a four, and then we're left with X squared minus nine. Now right here, that's difference of perfect squares, so just for that part, I'm going to say my A is X and my B is three. So now I'm going to plug it into my formula, a plus b, a minus b, do not forget to drop the original GCF. And this is going to be our answer to number 7.